church. Welcome to this Sunday, wherever you're watching all around the world. Come on. Uh, C3 Toronto, if you uh, didn't know where you were tuned in at. Uh, but my name is Sam and this is Jess. And man, it's been an exciting week. We had Easter last we weekend. Did. And uh, what an incredible weekend that we had mm -hmm. as a church. Then we had All In on Thursday. And uh, it's been amazing. We announced, uh, if you didn't get it yet, mm -hmm. we announced that we are going to do in-person services in the middle of the week so on Thursday, starting from May 20th. So you need mm -hmm. to check that out. We're going to do two a month to start with, right. uh, provided that restrictions and, and government allowances uh, allow us to do that. So stay tuned for what's going on. But if you missed, there's a ton of stuff going on. You need to go back and check out uh, the all-in stuff from Thursday. Yeah. Uh, but it's good. We want to make sure that you get connected. So if you're new, uh, there's a comment uh, in the comment section mm -hmm. on the side there. Yeah, Check. a link. Fill out. Are right. up. There's a link fill out. Putting up for you. <laughs> fill out the comment. Yeah. No, fill out, <laughs> fill out the link and uh, we'll get you connected. Totally. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. And we have something really exciting coming up actually on May 6th. Come on. I don't know if you want to share a little bit about it, but it's a night of vision yeah. at our all-in night. So it's something that you don't want to miss. That's why we're telling you nice and early now so you can book it off in your calendars. But a night of vision on May 6th. Do you want to share anything about it? Well? No, you, <laughs> but it's going gonna, gonna to be an incredible vision unveiled. So you want to you right. make sure you're there first Thursday in May, mm -hmm. all right? Now, listen, it's church, and uh, so we are going to worship God. We're going to lift our spirit, yeah. be in faith, and uh, why don't you just join us right now in worship? Good morning, church. I am so happy that you've made it to today's online service, and I just want to tell you God is good, and God loves you wherever you are. And you know, I was reflecting over the story of the woman with the issue of blood. Now, this woman had been seeking breakthrough for 12 years. She was seeking healing. She tried all things humanly possible. She spent all her money trying to find healing, but she couldn't. She couldn't, and all it took was an encounter with Jesus. All it took was an encounter with the Father, the, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, her Savior, her Messiah. And that God is here today, and He is ready to encounter you. So I don't know what 2020 looked like for you. Maybe 2020 was full of disappointments, prayers you felt on answer. Well, I'm, I'm here to promise you, God is here for you. God is ready to give you your breakthrough. And so we're going to sing with faith. We're going to believe today that your breakthrough is here in Jesus' name. So Father, I thank you so much today because your power still remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. Almighty God, we believe there will be breakthrough. There shall be breakthrough in, 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 in health, oh God. Sicknesses is taken away. Oh Lord, cancer is taken away. COVID is taken away. Oh Lord, chains of depression right now are broken. Chains of, of financial insecurity right now broken in the name of Jesus addictions destroyed in the name of Jesus we believe for breakthrough this morning because you're all powerful and you're our father who loves us so dearly in Jesus name amen so church let us raise our voices raise our faith this morning and engage in the song and touch Jesus's garments this morning in Jesus name amen
spoke those words, let there be light, and it was, oh, and in that same breath, the stars came in with one voice, creation cries, you do all things well. Love that powerful worship today. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Our worship team is absolutely amazing. James, Landon, and Denise, Denise. that all that trio and CC combo. Too. CC yeah, but there. that first song, I was like, oof. Hello. Okay. Oof. okay. Well, we would love to invite you to be part of Connect Groups. Yeah. That's such an important part of being, you know, active in our community. And mm -hmm. so you can head to our website and find your fit yeah. on there. It's important to make friends, find people that you can talk about what's happening in your week and yeah. then, you know, be encouraged in the scripture and in Sunday's message together. 
Uh, you can also head to Post Lobby Vibes every Sunday after service. Every Sunday after service. If you service. want to find your fit, we have people yeah. there who can help you. Yeah, so if you're tuning in for the first time or you're watching this on YouTube, Post Lobby Vibes happens every Sunday yeah. after each service. And there are four conversations happening and taking at place. Least. And so it resembles the lobby at church in person where you're just making new connections, talking yeah. to people. And so we provided that after service online. So we would love to see you there and connect with some members of our church. Yes. And then don't forget that we have new merch available. Yeah. Goodness gracious. And, and everyone's just been seeing the hoodies, but there's yes. more than just hoodies. Oh, we've got some summer, summer things summer out attire. there. Summer attire. You can find slides for people who aren't cool. Those are like flip flops. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's cool. me, not cool like me. Um, we have t-shirts as well. I love wearing my merch on a Zoom call and having uh -huh. someone say, oh, what is that? It doesn't say goodness on your shirt. Does it say <laughs> for the love of God on your shirt? And then you can tell them about church. Yes. It is all meant to bring yeah. people to church and Come help on. them encounter Jesus. So make sure you head to our website started. for yeah. that. And uh, that's it from us. Let's welcome Pastor Sam as he encourages us in our giving. Church, so good uh, to be talking to you about our finances and about giving right now. Uh, I want to encourage you that there are different ways to give. You can click the link in the chat. You can go to the website and uh, just you can fill out the giving information. Uh, I always want to just make a little point to say uh, thank you so much. Like I mean, uh, to continue regular support and regular giving into the church through the last 12 months uh, it's an understatement to say that uh, we appreciate your faithfulness. It's incredible to see what God has done through the life of the church, through salvations and miracles and, and different things. I just got a letter from someone yesterday just, uh, just really expressing gratitude uh, for the ministry of the church and for things that go on. And honestly, like really pragmatically, that it wouldn't happen if it wasn't for faithful stewardship, faithful giving. But, but giving uh, is not just about that. It's not just about supporting your church and making sure that there's food in the house. It's, it's a, trust ex a, a trust exchange. So why don't you type in the chat, trust. And I want to I just talk to you about when it comes to making God the person that we trust in, making Him our refuge. And in Psalms chapter 46 and verse 3 and 4, it says, Though its waters roar, Though it's waters roar and foam. Money has a massive tendency to sound louder than, uh, in, in money problems, sound louder than they really are. Uh, th this water, it roars and it foams. And that means that it's loud, but it's weightless. It's, it, it, it seems to present a massive issue in, in through the last 12 months, through a pandemic, whatever it is, wherever your financial economy is at, that when money problems come, they speak extremely loud. It's very difficult to focus on nearly anything else. Like if we were to be honest, they can be all consuming. Uh, but, but the Bible says here is that it's foam. And money will try and make us think that if we don't have enough of it, we don't have refuge. We don't have security and we don't have safety. But that is not where our refuge comes from. It, God uses it if He wants, but at the end of the day, coming under God is where our refuge comes from. So it says, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, whose holy place where the Most High dwells. So there is two different waters here. There is the water of the turbulence of the trouble of life, and there's the river of peace that comes from the throne room of heaven. And Psalms also says that we can be like trees planted by that water that will bear fruit in and out of season. When you and I give, when we bring our finances to God, we say, Lord, we trust you. You are our refuge and we want to be planted by your stream. And waters may crash and roar and rage around us. But I want to tell you that if you place your trust in God, you will never be forsaken. So let's just pray right now. I want to pray for any person out there that is just struggling to really trust God when there are mountains surging and quaking and when there's waters raging around our lives. So Father, for anybody that feels a presence of anxiety, feels fear and trembling, feels that 
life can be out of control, I thank you, God, that you call us to your sanctuary. You call us to your high place, your holy place. I thank you that there is a river of peace flowing in people's lives right now, that as we focus on you and we know the truth of your word, that we will find ourselves planted in that river of peace. So Lord God, I pray for anybody out there that is experiencing financial hardships, and I thank you, Jesus, that they would be reassured to have faith and faith in you alone. So Father God, we praise you, we give you all the glory, and everybody said... Amen. Amen. Hey, while you're doing that or while you're considering what you're giving, let's just play this awesome story uh, from Tom. And this is also a story about trusting in God. Hi, my name's Tom and uh, this is my story. Growing up, everything was going great in my life. I became a Christian when I was 13 years old and I really felt God just on my life. And then um, I was about 20 years old. There was a real like tragedy that hit my family like never before. All these things that I'd learned about God being good and faithful and all of a sudden like that had just disappeared in my mind. I remember being so furious that God would allow that to happen in my life and, and I was just like what's the point of me carrying on doing this Christian faith journey? Now, I've never been more tempted in my life to just go and do my own thing, but I really felt like this was the moment where I was gonna stand up and be like, yes, these people are standing firm in their faith. This is my turn. I started going to church and I was broken and I was in turmoil and I was praying out to God and still not hearing anything. But I was gonna be part of community no matter what. I made a decision in my life that I was gonna be a part of the house of God and I was gonna trust that this was gonna work out for me. Through great community and through people that were just building my faith up. And constantly there's times I just wanna give up, but they just kept speaking into my life, kept telling me that it was gonna be all right and that God was who he was. All of a sudden those chains, the weight of, of grief that is, was on my life just disappeared in a moment. So then fast forward, I was still being a part of church, being a part of community. And then I really felt the sense of God saying, okay, now that you've dealt with that season of grief and that season of pain, and you've, you've proven to me that you're willing to be faithful, now I want you to get out of your comfort zone. I want you to go to Toronto and I want you to build my church and I want you to be a part of community in, in Toronto. I get here, I'd be a part of C3 Toronto. And then three months into this, COVID happens and a pandemic happens. And this community that I had just gets like, ripped away from me. Um, you've called me to this place. You've told me to be here. And now all of a sudden, all the plans that you've had have just been thrown out the window. Like, what? Are, where are you? He really kind of just spoke to me and just said, hey, this is where you need to be, trust in me. I told you that I'm taking you out of your comfort zone. And like, I've been doing some awesome things for the church, things that I never would have thought I could do. But every time and every step of the way, God's been with me. This year has been the hardest year, but also the most rewarding year of my life, where I think my level of in intimacy with God has increased more than ever before because I decided to step out and to be a part of community. When you keep going with God and you keep pushing forward, like he promises to be there and he can do incredible things when you just step out. What a story. Oh my gosh, we like love Tom. We love his accent. We always say Tommy. It's a terrible accent, but we attempt it. But Tom runs our live lobby here and he is just amazing. And I just love that story. And you know what? We've been in such a great uh, series called, well, it's called Narrow, but it's all about the Beatitudes. And actually our worship team, our creative team put together like a little fun little dance thingy. Um, and you know what? We haven't played it in a couple of weeks and it's one of my favorite creative pieces. So I thought, why don't we play it today? This might be our last time to uh, play it. So why don't we have a look at the screen and watch this video?
series called Narrow, and uh, it comes from this verse, actually, in Matthew 5. It's what it is, is the very beginning of, um, it's a sermon that Jesus does. He walks up to a mountain and does a, um, a sermon, and that's why it's quite often called the Sermon on the Mount. And what it is, is it's the um, attributes and the characteristics that Christ is asking us to be as followers of him, as Christians. And so what I love about this passage is it's not just some genealogy where we're getting to learn about Christ or uh, it's actually something that we can carry ourselves and that we can learn to be more like Christ by reading through this. And so uh, we've had a great series so far. We've had some amazing guests. We've had Pastor Sam speak so many great words. We've had uh, Pastor Justin Reimer, uh, Pastor Paul Donker as well. So if you're in the chat right now, why don't you type in a quick, like, what's your favorite message so far? Maybe your best revelation or word that you've gotten so far through this series because we're a community in that chat. So why don't you type that in? But I love that this is a guide for us. And so I'm going to read... Uh, now through uh, Matthew 5, and we're going to read through some of these Beatitudes. So we've already touched on a bunch of these, but in verse 3 it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And you know what? There's something about these Beatitudes that they're not just characteristics and attitudes that we get to carry, but there's actually a reward for carrying those attributes. So when we are in mourning, we will be comforted. There's a fruit, there's a reward for the action. And everything that we do in life, there is some sort of reward, fruit, or even a consequence. Nothing that we do uh, has nothing at the end of it. There is always a fruit, a reward, or a consequence. And so blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And I love how upside down the Bible is, how it talks about something that you wouldn't think inherits the earth is actually the one that does. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And then my verse for today, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. So the fruit here is actually that they will be called children of God, which uh, kind of stuck out to me as being quite a contrasted uh, thing that I wouldn't necessarily think would go with peacemaking, but there's this beautiful identity that's actually attached to peacemaking. So I'm going to just pray quickly right now. Lord, I just thank you so much for your word. I thank you for these beatitudes. I thank you for what we've learned so far. And I know that we're going to learn even more today, Father. So thank you that your anointing and your hand and your voice is on this message right now today, Lord. In your name, amen. 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 So blessed are the peacemakers. And I mean, this message couldn't have come at a better time I don't know where you're watching from right now, but you know what? In Toronto, we just got news this week of a stay-at-home order, which marks, I guess, 13 months now of uh, lockdowns, 
shutdowns, uh, stay-at-home orders, emergency orders, basically the same thing, just said in 20 different ways. <laughs> and so we have been in our homes and we, we finally started to get some sense of normalcy. You know, restaurants were starting to open up patios again and it was the most exciting thing in Toronto. And we were like, yes, maybe normal things are going to start to happen again. And then we got told to stay at home again. So I don't know where you're at right now, but if you're in Toronto, my heart is out here with you. We are right here in the city with you. Um, but you could be anywhere facing anything because this pandemic has uh, taken its toll on so many people in so many ways. And there is not just one, one way that people are struggling. People are struggling in so many ways. And so wherever you're at right now, I believe that this is a timely message from God that we are called to be peacemakers so maybe you are somewhere and you're caring for a sick, sick loved one through this season. Maybe you're on the verge of losing your business or you know people that are on the verge of losing their businesses. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe you are struggling with mental health issues. We've seen marriages that are on the rocks from this. We've seen people lose their houses because of this. We've seen so many terrible things happen in this last 13 months. But there is hope. There is hope. There is hope in Jesus. And I know that this message is going to help you today. But if you are in one of those hard situations, I do want to highlight, actually, that we do have a prayer room. So you can click and a host will pray with you right now. Or at the end of the service, you can actually go to our post lobby vibes and someone can pray with you there as well. Because you know what? You are not alone with whatever you are going through. We are here to help. And you can even reach out to the church if you are struggling financially because our Project Love to You is in full swing and we do not want you to be stuck struggling on the other end of this camera because there is community here to help you. So let me preface this message. So when you read... Uh, blessed are the peacemakers, for they are children of God. You can sometimes uh, let your mind think a million different things. It's such a beautiful scripture that can be interpreted so many different ways, and a lot of them are really right ways to interpret it. But what I want to preface is uh, what I'm not speaking about today. So I am not speaking today about creating world peace, okay? I'm not speaking about how we as people are called to go out there and make peace. Although we are, that is totally a right way to interpret the scripture. We are meant to go out and make peace in people's worlds. But it's not where I want to start this message today. It's not what I want to focus on today. Because I believe that we can get so stuck and so caught up in looking outside of our world, and we can see all of the division outside of our world. And we can think that we need to bring peace there, but we can ignore the division that's in our own heart. At the very core of what peacemaking is, at the very core of what peace is, is it's a lack of division. It's complete unity with Christ. And so I want us today to be a little bit challenged by this, but I think all of us have that little bit of division inside of us. All of us have some area inside our worlds where we're not in complete unity with Christ. And I don't want us to just focus out, because if we focus out, we'll miss what we can get on the inside. So what I want to focus on today is how do we make peace in our own world? How do we make peace between us and God? And I'm not talking about, like, you know, how to be one with yourself and, you know, just focus on yourself and, you know, go into your happy zen place and zone out and I am at peace with myself. This is just beautiful. That's not what I am talking about right now. So don't hear me wrong. What I'm talking about is that disunity that we can cause between us and Christ and making peace with Christ in our heart, in our spirit, in our minds. Let's make peace with Christ. And so, oh my gosh, there we go. So I want to ask you right now, are you in peace in your life? Do you feel peace? Is your mind at peace? Is your spirit at peace? Is your heart at peace? Is your whole soul and being at peace? And my question to you is if it's not, which chances are it's not because we're not all, all at peace all the time, is maybe there's a division between you and Christ that we need to sort out, that we need to deal with. So let's be honest with ourselves. 
So in Romans 8, 38 to 39, there's this great scripture and it says, it talks about this division between us and Christ. And it's a positive scripture because it says in 38, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So then why do we feel separate from him? If all of these things won't cause us to be separate from him, why do we? Where does this division come from? So before we go and put our capes on and try and be superheroes in our world and go and fix all of the disunity out there, let's fix the disunity in ourselves, in our heart, in our mind, and in our spirit. So where do we actually find this peace? We've already heard me touch on it. Where do we find peace? Where do we actually find peace? And I don't know how you've coped in the last 13 months, but, you know, we've all got our coping mechanisms. We've all got our things that we have tried to uh, go and use or do to create peace in our world. Because it's been a pretty tumultuous season. It's been a bit crazy. And I know for me, one of the things that I am going to admit to to you all, and maybe if you're brave, you can admit to some of your vices in the chat right now. But one of the things for me and in our household has been chocolate. And I would say, I'm embarrassed to admit it when I started to look at the numbers, but we're, we're at like a good one to two, maybe even three, maybe even four blocks a week kind of category within our household. And when I say that, I mean me and Sam. And when I say that, I mean 90% me and 10% Sam. And when I did the numbers, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's like, that's a good 100, 200. That could be like close to 300 blocks of chocolate in the last, you know, 12 months that we have devoured. And there's nothing wrong with chocolate. It's wonderful. I love it. It is a great like little, little fix to kind of help in the moment. But it's not something that lasts. It's not something that actually brings peace to me long term. And I don't know what you go to maybe that helps you when you're needing peace. Maybe you go to your friends or your family. That's a great thing. But maybe it won't actually fully uh, hit you with all of the peace that you need. Maybe you go to Instagram to vent. That could be a thing that we do. Maybe we go to Instagram to escape. I know that I can fall into that sometimes. It's just nice to kind of scroll and just escape on people's vacation feeds. And then you're like, wait, why, how are you going on a vacation? And no one else is, but that's another thing. Maybe you even go for a walk outside, which is nice. Maybe you live somewhere where there's trees and you can enjoy the trees. Or maybe uh, it's Netflix. Or maybe, you know, it's just too much chocolate like I do. But whatever it is, these things are these beautiful things of life. There's absolutely nothing wrong with enjoying these finer things in life, but they should be this little bit of extra on top of what we already have in Christ. They can't actually be our source. Jesus is our ultimate source. It says in Philippians 4, 6 to 7, which is another great scripture that speaks so directly into this season. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, the peace of God, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. True peace comes from Christ. The ultimate, true, pure peace comes from from Christ. It's simple, it's true, it's basic, maybe you've heard it before, but that is where it truly comes from. It transcends all understanding. The fact that this scripture says it transcends understanding, I try and understand so much in my world, and maybe you're like me, but this piece, it cannot be understood. It is unexplainable. When you experience it, you can't even put words to it. It is above and beyond anything. We can't even describe it. It transcends all understanding. And you know what else it does is it guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. It's not a peace that just makes us feel good and just makes us feel better about our world, but it actually has action to it. It is a peace that guards our hearts and our minds. It creates a protective barrier from other things that can try and get in and try and steal it again. It actually 
helps us to keep that peace within ourselves. It's not a band-aid peace. It's a fulfilling, uh, healing, and protective peace. And the only way that we can get it is through Christ Jesus. But I love what it says in, in this uh, passage with the Beatitudes, where it says that blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. The reason why we have access to this peace is because we are his children. This is the only beatitude that speaks to our identity. It's the only one in the whole list. The rest of them have other fruits and other, you know, beautiful rewards that come with them. But this one speaks to our identity, who we are in Christ, who made us, where we came from, who we look like. And so it comes from our Father. There is this identity and a rest and a peace that comes when we know that we are children of God. And I mean, I couldn't talk about being children of God without talking about my own children (laughs) and what that's like. And I know in our household, we are so blessed with an amazing father in our household. I couldn't have married a better guy to father my children. Not only did he make them look super cute because he's got great genes, but he's also a great father. And I noticed that, you know, especially in this last year, there's been these really crazy, crazy moments where, you know, there's, because there's three children now, there was only two children when the pandemic started, and now there's three children, and it's loud, and it's chaotic, and it can be just completely crazy and just overwhelming, and there's screaming, and there's crying, and there's fighting, and I can just be like, what is going on? And the second that Sam walks into the room, a calm comes on the place. The kids are happy. They calm. There's this, um, there's this anointing and this weight of peace and calm that Sam actually brings into the room. And, you know, that's something that maybe if you're a dad watching this, that's something to, like, go after as a husband and as a dad. It's an, such an honorable trait. It might be one of my favorite. There's some others that, you know, I love in the husband category of my, of my husband. But uh, the father category of my husband, this is probably one of my favorite traits. And I think that that's exactly the way that Christ is with us. And the more that we are in relationship with our Father, actually the more that we become like our Father. And so it's this like, it's this kind of like cycle effect. So as we're peacemakers, we're identified as being children of God. But the only way that we can be identified as being children of God is because we are aware of that identity, and then we outwork the peacemaking. It's kind of like this circle thing that happens. And so I don't, know, I don't know what your dad is like in this world. I have no idea. He could be amazing. He might not even be around at all. But I know that when our Father, Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father, when he comes into our world and when he comes into the room, there is peace, there is calm, that we can rest knowing that we are his, that we're not just followers. This scripture could have said that. It could have said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they uh, will be called followers of Christ. It could have said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called servants of Christ. It could have said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they are, you know, kind of great friends with Christ. But it says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they are children of of God. They are children of God. There's an identity that comes in that. So our Father in heaven, let me give you a picture of who he is, because maybe you've never known him as that. Maybe you've only known him as this like God up in the sky that doesn't really care, or maybe you just don't know about him at all. But let me give you a picture of what our Father in heaven is like. He is for you. He's actually for you. He actually made you because he wanted one of you, which, again, how unexplainable and like we can't even understand that. He is for you. He has good things in store for you if you follow him and follow his ways. He has good things in store when we follow the plan that he has for us. He made you for a purpose. He didn't just make you to just be. He made you with specific gifts and abilities. He made you for a reason and a purpose to make a difference in this world, in people's lives. He is bigger than anything that you can face. 
absolutely bigger than anything. Nothing is comparable to how great and mighty he is. His wisdom supersedes any earthly wisdom. If you have a problem that you are struggling to understand, his wisdom supersedes anything that you could read in a book. He's just incredible. He's the ultimate authority. And he moves in the miraculous. This year has been filled with stories of pain and heartache and loss. But do you know what else this year has been filled with? Incredible stories of the miraculous. In how a year that has been just so unprecedented, this has been also an unprecedented year in miracles. The lowest of lows has brought the highest of highs because we have so lent into him. We have gone into his presence. We have gone after him and we have just heard so many miracles from you guys in this community, from friends and family. We've seen people buy houses. Who buys houses in a pandemic, in when people are losing jobs? People that are following Christ, the miraculous. He makes miracles happen. We've seen people fall pregnant. And we've seen people fall pregnant for the second time. They couldn't try, couldn't fall pregnant the first time and they've fallen pregnant again the second time. It's miraculous. We've seen marriages restored. So yes, we've seen pain, but we've seen the restoration of marriages. We've seen the restoration of family units. We've seen so many miracles come to pass. And so I want to remind you that he is the God of the miraculous in your world because he cares about you. So that is what the peace is that we are trying to become. That is the peacemakers that we are trying to become is people that carry Christ in our own world, in our own being, and then take it out there. So my second point then is how do we make this peace then? How do we make peace? We're not peacekeepers. We're not just peace carriers but we're peacemakers. So how do we make peace? And how do we make peace then when the peace actually comes from God? We can't ourselves be the ones to make it. So I want to share a little story about how when I've tried to make peace because I, I like peace, I like keeping the peace, I like making peace. And we were in this uh, season, and you might relate to this, maybe you can write in the chat as well as I'm talking, you'll be thinking about moments when you've tried to make peace in your own world. But I remember this time, we'd had this really crazy year, and uh, we ended up going to Calgary for Christmas time, and it was so stinking cold. It was like, we've lived in Calgary before, so I'm not talking like someone who hasn't lived there experiencing Calgary. This was like, we've lived there, and it was like the coldest thing that we'd ever experienced even living there. It was like minus 40. There was massive wind chill warnings. There was like, don't go outside for longer than 10 minutes unless you're completely covered. And we, so we traveled all the way over there to enjoy a beautiful white Christmas, to enjoy snowboarding. And we were in our home and it was just devastating and horrible. And Sam and I looked at each other and we're like, you know what? We're not going to do a white Christmas next year. That's it. We're going to go sunny Christmas. Florida Christmas, here we come next year. We are making peace in our world. It's chaotic. And we did. We had the most crazy year after that. But we like we started planning as of January. We booked the Airbnb. We booked our flights and we were excited. We told the kids 12 months in advance that this was happening. And so we're just looking forward to this. All year is going to be great. This is going to be the most peaceful vacation that we've ever had. And we're going to be so well rested to take on the year after. So it gets close to the time. And we have now nicknamed this the vacation from hell because it was terrible. So our, our Airbnb canceled three weeks before. So we had to find a new Airbnb. And we're like, well, you know, we're still like in high spirits. It's still going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. We went down there with uh, Marie and Josh, my brother and sister-in-law and their children. So it was this big, beautiful family vacation. We get there. The day I get there, I start to come down with cold symptoms. And I'm like, hmm, maybe this is, you know, just like my immune system. This happens, right? Your immune system kind of crashes a little bit when you go on vacation. And so I start getting sick. Three days in, I'm so sick that my, um, my eardrum bursts. I'm so swollen, my sinuses. I have to fly home early because I had to get medical care. Kenzie got sick and had to fly home early to get medical care. Marie had got the stomach flu, and she, so she was like just 
it was not a pretty sight for her. Her daughter got the stomach flu as well. Sam got a cold as well. And uh, basically by the end of it, the only person still standing was Josh and my son Noah. And they had a great vacation. But the rest of us, on the other hand, oh, and then to top that off, because I left early to come back, uh, it messed up a few of the flights, and then the rest of the family actually missed their flight on the way back. So it was kind of like the icing of the cake on a terrible vacation, missing their flight home. All that to say, how much do we try and do this in our lives? We try and make peace. We try and make these situations happen. We try and cross every T and dot every I and put in all the effort to try and make peace happen. But God just keeps reminding us how much we can't. We are not the ones to make the peace. We cannot do it. We can't rest enough or go on enough vacations or, you know, we can't lay in a bath with candles enough, although that is really, really nice. We can't do that enough to make peace in our world. It just will not fulfill. But I'll tell you what we can do. We make peace when we connect with God. That's how we make peace. It's as simple as that. We make peace by connecting with God. In Philippians 4, 6, 7, which I shared earlier, which says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Right here gives us the formula of how we can make peace with God. So the first thing, in every situation, every situation, no matter what you're facing right now, whether it seems terrible and horrible, or maybe it just only seems a little bit like a hard situation. Every situation, we bring it to Christ. And then we bring it to Him by prayer and petition. So we get into the, we get into the prayer place. We don't just think about it. We don't just try and fix it in our own strength. We get into prayer and petition with Him. And we don't just do it in a begging way. We do it where it says here with thanksgiving. We don't pray prayers like, God, I just beg you, like, if you can just do this, if you can just do this. No, we go in there with thanksgiving. Lord, you are good. You have come through so many times before. I know you're going to come through again. This is incredible. And then we present our request to God. No one else, just God. He's the only one that can fulfill it. So in order to make peace, more God equals more peace. More God equals more peace. So if you're not feeling it right now, let me encourage you, in order to make peace in your world, you might need more of the word, you might need more prayer, you might need more worship, and you might need more action, where you step out on something that God's asked you to do. And this isn't works-based Christianity, let me clarify. This isn't do something so that God makes peace with you. What this actually is, is this is do something so that you can clear off any of the junk on yourself and reignite that connection with Christ. He's always there. We read earlier, he doesn't, nothing changes. There's nothing that can come against us that will disconnect our relationship with God. But we can. We can muddy it up and we can try and do it all in our own strength and we kind of end up like this. And so what more prayer and more word and more worship does is it does this. And we can see that God was there all along and it gets us into that place and we can actually make peace with God. And then once we make peace with God, making peace out there and creating world peace, well, it's a little bit different. We don't have to do it in our own strength anymore. We do it because we've made peace with Christ. So Jesus himself, he was the ultimate peacemaker, the ultimate peacemaker. What he did is he died on the cross. He did an action so that we could actually have peace with God in heaven. The ultimate peacemaker. Nothing that we can do can ever compare to that. He laid it all down. He paid the price. He went through these this scary situation, this overwhelming situation, all of this pain so that we could have connection with God here and now, straight away. Because of this sacrifice, we get that privilege. And so we follow in his footsteps and yes, we we make a difference in our world by making peace out there and, and we we reconnect with God, but let's follow Jesus and be 
peacemakers. Let's follow his example and just we can thank him for the uh, decisions that he made and for how he led the way for us to be able to have God in our lives every single day. And so I don't know where you are at right now, but maybe this idea of relationship with God or relationship with Jesus all seems very foreign to you. Or maybe you have had relationship with Jesus before and you feel like you've drifted away in this last season. I want to invite you right now to invite Jesus into your heart, to start a relationship perhaps for the first time or maybe again with Jesus and to walk with him going forward. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to invite you to, you can, if you want to make that decision right now, that you can click on the I raise my hand button. And what we're going to do together is we're going to say a prayer together. And what this prayer does is it just begins that connection. It begins that back and forth exchange between you and Christ. It clears out any of the junk that's in the way and starts that dialogue with your heavenly Father, the one that loves you and cares about you so, so much. So if that's you today, right now, why don't you just repeat after me as I say this prayer. Say, Dear Jesus, I invite you into my heart today. I thank you that you died on the cross to set me free. I repent of my past. Wash me clean. Make me new. And help me to follow you as Savior and as Lord of my life from this day forward. Amen. 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 I'm so proud of you. If you made that decision today, it is the best decision that you could ever, ever make. And you know what? You can, uh, once you click that button, there'll be people that will want to help and, and get you connected in and answer any questions that you might have. You can also come to Post Lobby Vibes after the service. But you know what? I just also want to pray over our entire church community right now and anybody that is watching this, because this season has been just not ideal in any way. And I believe that this is a message for now. I just want to pray a prayer of blessing over you. So Lord, I just thank you for every single person right now. Lord, I thank you that you are our heavenly father. I thank you that you care about every single person watching this right now, that you have a plan and a purpose for them. Lord, I thank you that you know whatever tough situation that they are facing, but that you have the peace that is needed to fill them up to fill up their heart, their mind, their spirit, their soul. And I just thank you that your hand is on this, Lord. I thank you that your Holy Spirit is ministering to people right now and throughout this week, Lord. I thank you for how great you are, how big you are, and all authority that you carry, Lord. We love you so much, Lord. In your name, amen. 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 To quote Nicola in the chat, that was revelational. <laughs> I love that word. Come on. But it's true. I can't wait for all of the conversations that we can have in our connect, connect groups, groups. Sure. Um, and seeing people restored to Christ yeah. and closer to God. What an amazing message just to Great open word. our eyes to some things that are so true. Awesome. And just as a reminder to echo what Pastor Jess said, if you did make a decision mm -hmm. to live life with Jesus, please let us know. There's a link in the chat that you can follow yeah. um, or right here. You can go to that website and we have people on our team who would love to walk this out with you and get you set up right on this journey. Yeah, and you can also join us at Post Lobby Vibes directly yes. after the service. We would love to see you in the prayer room mm -hmm. or what's or how to get to know uh, how to get connected, which is through yeah. Connect Group or Project Love TO, or get to know more about C3, get to know more about the church uh, that you're a part of. So we would love to see you there as well. Definitely. And once again, thank you so much for your continued support mm -hmm. of church and church online. And if you'd like to continue your giving, the ways that you can do that are coming up right now. But as for us, that is it. It's time for everyone's kids. favorite part. Yeah. C3 Kids, Rocco, Mike, and Sierra. We'll see you guys in connect groups and at prayer on Thursday this yeah. week. Have a great week, church. Back with my trusty Bible here. I'm so excited for what I'll discover today. Let's see here. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Well, that sure sounds nice. We could be called God's kids. Just imagine that. Uh, everything is peaceful and calm. Uh -huh.
hats go marching one by one. Hurrah! Hurrah! The hats go marching one by Fox, one. Hurrah! What are you doing? Oh, I'm just singing a little hiking song. Do you know this one? The hats go marching one by one. The little ones stop. Fox, stop. buddy, <laughs> do you have to sing so loud? It's kind of breaking the peace and quiet. But Rocco, it's a hike, and I love to sing. Well, you don't even have the words right. It's the ants go marching, not the hats go marching. Hats don't even have legs. Hats, ants, whatever. Why do you gotta be such a downer? Me? I was having a peaceful time until you showed up. Well, I don't think I want to hike with you anymore. Clearly you're just a grumpy pants today. Fine, I'll just have more fun without you then, fucks. Fine, I'll have fun without you too, Rocco. Well, that's just fine then. Fine! Oh, my sweet friends, what have we here? Rocco's in a crummy mood, that's all. Well, that wasn't my fault. I wasn't the one ruining a peaceful day. Your idea of a peaceful day is being boring. Okay, okay, let's pause. Rocco, is it true that you read what Jesus told us about being peacemakers? Well, yeah, he said when we're peacemakers, we will be called God's children. And who are God's children? Uh, isn't that all of us? That's right, Fox. But guys, Jesus says we're blessed when we're peacemakers, which actually doesn't mean that we just keep things quiet all the time, Rocco but that we create peace even when there's clashing or arguing. So you're saying it wasn't Fox being loud that spoiled the peace? It was just us fighting? Well, I wanted to keep things quiet, but I guess that's not the same as peacemaking. But you have the chance to make peace again now, right? It might mean a tough conversation with whoever we're at odds with, but when we stick together, we show that we're part of God's family. Oh, Rocco, I don't want to fight anymore. You're my friend and we're both God's kids. Yeah, I'm sorry for getting upset with you, Fox. I thought peace was all about things being calm all the time, but now I see that making peace is about getting past our differences. I am ever so proud of you both. Well, it's much better when God's children get along, I think. Yeah, thanks, Sierra, for helping us. Aw, don't mention it. And remember, you still have something in common to bring you together. Oh, I'm sorry for what I said before, Rocco. I still want to finish this climb with you. Yeah, me too, Fox. Let's shake on it. Whoa, Fox! We did it! Wow! Doesn't it feel great? Yeah, it might be hard, but it's worth it to make peace with the other children in God's family. Yeah! We're Rocco and Fox! Children of God! Best buds! Peacemakers! And epic mountain climbers! And don't forget... Blast! Super Blast! Hey, Fox, you want to sing a song together now? Of course, Rocco. But we should say bye to the kids first. Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll see you next time, kids. Bye! bye. Hey, Rocco. Hey, Mike. You ready to sing our Beatitude song? Well, is this where we get to sing little things that make us blessed? Exactly. But you know what? I've been feeling like singing the blues. I'm gonna get my little guitar here and give it a strum. Uh, Mike, that's a tennis racket. I just pretend it's a guitar, Rocco. Okay. Here it is, the Attitude Blues. I am blessed when I am sad. I know that God will comfort me. What, even if I was like, <laughs> Yes, Rocco, even if you were like, <laughs> I am blessed when I realize that Jesus is the friend I really need. Because Jesus is my best friend. He is my best friend. I'm not going to take that personal. I am blessed when I forgive. Well, sorry, but who was I supposed to choose? I am blessed when my heart is pure. Well, Mike, you know what this is? It's the Beatitude Blues. I am blessed when I live for Jesus, no matter what the people may say. And I am blessed when I praise the Father, no matter what may come my way. And I am blessed when I make peace, and I am blessed when I stay meek. I could be hungry for broccoli, but I'm blessed to do it right is what I see. But, Mike, did you just say broccoli? I did. Well, what does that have to do with Beatitudes? Nothing, I'm just kind of hungry. Oh, well, we could go for pizza after this. Sounds good, but uh, let's finish the song first. Okay. This is our song, the Beatitude Blues. Come and sing along, the Beatitude Blues. You can't go wrong with the Beatitude Blues. And now it's time to go for pizza. And don't 
forget the broccoli. 